All right, today's video, we got a little little two-part video. Uh, we're out here in the woods, get some deer spots ready. Um, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna go from here. We're gonna go back to the Realtree office, go to the studio. We're gonna go through some archery arrow setups. Uh, we're gonna go through a couple different options of, of my personal experiences, what have worked well, what's worked not so well. And so, uh, not only that, we're going to show video evidence. So we're going to show several kill shots of kind of how things have worked. But first, we got a little problem. So if you watch the last video, and I'll link it up in this corner, Rigsby and I put out a mineral site trying to find some secret honey holes, and JJ found it. So he found it within a couple days. We didn't do a good enough job of getting off the beaten path, but today... We're, uh, we're off the beaten path. I know you weren't crazy enough to think that I didn't have backup options. So we are way, way back in here. And this is a spot I actually found during turkey season. I've already put a little secret mineral site in here. I've checked on it, they're hitting it. And we're gonna freshen it up today. So uh, good luck finding this one, JJ. They're hitting this right here. So what this spot is right here, this is a, kind of like a little little hardwood finger that runs up in here. It's surrounded by thick pines on each side. And uh, we got a few white oaks in here. Probably put a stand right here as a tree with a ton of cover. But this is this is way, way off any any road. We walked quite a ways to get up in here. That should do it. Uh, I don't have a camera with me right now, but I'll come back in a couple weeks and uh, put a camera in here, see what's hitting this spot. I want to leave as little evidence as possible. The spot was kind of hard to find, but I think it's going to be really good. So uh, let's sl slide on out of here. All right guys, so we are back here in the Realtree Studios and this is kind of a two-part video. So this is something I've been really taking in a lot of content. I've been researching a lot of stuff on YouTube and, and uh, I've just become a student of archery, of arrows, of fine tuning. And so something I wanted to do a video on today is my personal experience. So I've got basically two different arrow setups and then I've got two different bow setups. And, I didn't want to just tell you, but I also wanted to show you kind of video proof of these, these setups, how they worked, what didn't work. Well, I shouldn't say what didn't work because everything worked, but what kind of penetration did I get? What did I like? What did I not like? And so I've got six deer kills that I've had over the last several years. Like I said, two different arrow setups, two different bow setups. And so we'll just get into them. And so basically, the first several examples are an uh, Easton Axis 5 millimeter arrow, Hoyt bow, and so the first setup is going to be several several different bows, uh, bow models in Hoyts, all around 68 to 71 pounds, and then for this first several examples, it's going to be a Easton, like I said, Easton Axis 5 millimeter arrow. This is. Uh, tack veins, I was using blazer veins early on. And so this is not a brass insert. This is just the, I think it's a 16 grain uh, hidden insert, which I do like the hidden insert technology. Um, I think it's really solid components. So first let's do this, let's weigh this arrow. All right, so this first example, I'm getting this arrow weighing in at about 386, 387. And then if you add a lighted knock to it, you're gonna be somewhere around 400 grains, which I would consider this to be a pretty extremely, not extremely light, but a pretty dang light arrow. And so, you know, back in the day when you kinda, of, before all the, the heavy arrow craze kinda of started, you know, you basically, I mean, for me at least, I would just go to the local pro shop and I would choose an arrow and just use stock components, you know, 100 grain, um, field tip, 100 grain broadhead, and so that's that's kind of really all we ever knew. And so first example will be a 70 pound Hoyt. I'm not sure exactly which uh, exact model, but so we're right, right around 70 
pounds, 400 grain arrow, and then the, I've got written down each, each broadhead. So this first scenario is gonna be a sever broadhead, expandable broadhead, like I said, five millimeter axis. So going into this first hunt, we're in Nebraska, first week of September. This is about four or five years ago, I wanna say. So this deer's coming in. And then I've got, so Tyler's filming me, I've got about a 10 or 12 yard shot, I mean, just chip shot. So the deer stops. I've basically got a perfectly broadside textbook angle, not really having to worry about any shoulder blade, not quartering two, pretty good angle. So we got probably this much of the arrow sticking out. I would say, obviously, you know, it's a money shot. It's right where you want it to be. Not getting a pass through, you know, kind of concerning, but deer ran 100 yards and died just out of sight on the camera. So, you know, you can kind of use your own opinion. Did it work? Yes, it worked. Did it perform like you would want it to? Maybe not, maybe. Um, so that's the first example. So let's go to example two. So example two is gonna be the same exact arrow setup. Same bow setup. We're gonna go to the Milk River. Probably my favorite favorite hunt ever. So this deer slides in on us. This shot's about 32. I remember exactly in my mind, it's about a 32 yard shot. So same everything. Perfectly broadside. Textbook angle and then just right in the boiler room and get a perfect pass through. So you can see two different results on the same bow setup, same arrow setup. One, you get, you know, decent penetration, but not a pass through. The other one zips right through them like a hot knife through butter. And so this deer ran 80 yards and died on camera. So uh, we got a pretty good result out of that one. Again, sever broadhead, same arrow setup. Yeah, so that's, that's example two. So we'll go to number three here. All right, so this hunt right here is gonna take us to Kansas. Big body buck. Deer comes in, same bow poundage, same arrow setup, sever broadhead. I remember playing this shot back in my mind. I was thinking, I asked the camera guy that was with me at the time, I was like, man, was that shot a little bit far back? Like it was a little strange. I didn't get, you know, a pass through, got decent penetration, but I was like, man, I don't know. The shot looked first First play back in my mind, I was thinking was the shot back, but I didn't get a ton of penetration. Did I square up a rib? Don't know. So I, I remember on this particular hunt, we didn't get really good blood. So we just followed droplets of blood, droplets of blood, and then we kind of stumbled up on the deer. He didn't go maybe 100, 120 yards, um, perfectly broadside. So that's that. So the next one, this is gonna take us to Kansas. So this is a different arrow setup. And so for this example, we're gonna to go to this Easton 6.5 millimeter. And I believe at the time was a 50 grain brass insert. So a little bit heavier arrow, same sever broadhead, tack veins. And I'll talk a little bit about the tack veins in a minute. Um, so a little, little bit heavier arrow setup. So let's get into this one. All right, so we got deer coming in, deer coming in. And I remember he was standing right at 23 yards. And my immediate reaction when this deer stopped, when he stopped, he kind of almost took a little bit of an angle towards me. So I'm thinking in this scenario, okay, he's quartering two a little bit. I don't want to just punch him right in the shoulder blade or scapula or whatever you want to call it. So I just kind of held off that back shoulder a little bit and let it eat. And I mean, it went right in the, in the money where I wanted it. And so this deer runs off. And I'm in my mind playing this thing out. I'm like, oh man, this deer's gotta, he's gotta fall over at any minute. Like I put it right where I wanted it. And so I think the lesson that I've always learned with quarter and two or quarter and away deer, it always seems like the entry and the exit is a little bit quarter and more than you think. And so I think in this scenario, I got the backside of one lung and liver. And so we watch the deer go over, he lays down. We feel good about it. We go back, watch the footage. Indeed, yes, it's, it's everything we think. And so we w waited maybe four or five hours. We went in there, deer's laying there dead. So we kind of confirmed that one lung, liver. So this was the hunt that kind of made me rethink everything. I, so I got with T-Bone and, and showed him all the video footage, told him about everything that happened in my experience. 
and T-Bone was like, hey man, let's, let's look at your total arrow setup, your total broadhead setup, your total bow weight. And so that's exactly what we did. So for example two, we'll just do this. We'll weigh this arrow. So this has been the setup that I've used the last couple of years. This is an Easton 6.5 millimeter, 100 grain brass insert in the front of this thing to kind of give it a little bit more FOC, lighted knock. And we got this thing weighing in at about 478 grains. So obviously a big difference from the, the five millimeter axis to this. And so not only with that, what we did was is we up my poundage. So I went from a, just for reference, I got a 27 inch draw and then we went to an 80 pound bow. So this particular bow is pulling at about 82, which I really like. And so what that did was, is I was able to beef up my arrow. I was able to beef up my poundage. And so I'm shooting this arrow at about 282 feet per second the last we checked. And so I've been really, really happy with this setup. And I think that, I think a lot of times people get a little bit intimidated by thinking of an 80 pound bow, which in my experience, what I've found is once you get your muscles tuned in, 80 pounds really feels like about 70 pounds, especially with these cams. I mean, the, the, everything's so smooth on the draw cycle. And so I think a lot of people probably could shoot 80 pounds and get that much more kinetic energy. And um, it's given me a ton more confidence. And so we'll show two more examples of what this setup has done. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been super happy with it. And so, uh, yeah, we'll just jump into these uh, last two examples. So for this one, this is gonna be a deer that I sell filmed in Georgia. And so we'll do this. This is the exact broadhead that I switched to. I got several different broadheads in here that I've tried. I kind of like to try everything, whether it's mechanicals, fixed heads. So what I was shooting at the time on here was a, this is a slick trick four blade. I can't remember if this was the Magnum or the, uh, the regular. So 100 grain head, 100 grain insert. All right, so yeah, we're weighing in at about 476 with this setup here. And so this example, like I said, is George, I was self filming and this deer comes in. And so I'm holding low, kind of holding on top of that heart. And what you can't see that you're kind of blocked by this limb that's in front of me, but the deer's back leg was kind of back. And so I'm holding right on top of the heart, extreme downward angle. Hit him kind of low, took his heart out. But what you can't see in the video, and I was watching this as he was running off, is it actually, when I got to the deer and found him, it broke his leg kind of right below where his leg meets the body. It was just, it was just totally broken right here. So deer runs about, 50 yards, ton of blood everywhere, and uh, very, very happy with that result. Uh, slick trick, heavy, pretty, he I would consider kind of a heavy era. I know there's a lot of people on the 500 grain, 600 grain, 700 grain, crazy, close shots, single bevel, broadheads, but uh, this, this very good result. I'm very happy with this setup here. Now, the fixed heads, and so I just for example, I've got, I've tested a ton of the different fixed heads. I've got QAD Exodus, and uh, it's a little tricky. It's a, it's a little tricky. I actually think, so I'm gonna jump to a 300 spine era this year. This is a 340. I think with all the weight that's on the front of this thing and shooting 82 pounds, I think I'm a little bit under spine, and so I'm gonna do a little bit more testing this year. I'm gonna jump to a 300 uh, spine arrow, test that out. I get a little bit, a little bit funny flight with the, with the fixed heads. I was able to, in this scenario, make it work, but, uh, overall very good result. And so let's go to the last example. All right. So this is going to be this setup here. So this is a, another cell filmed hunt in Georgia. And this is with a G5 dead meat. Very, very popular mechanical head. There's a lot of people that shoot this and have a lot of really good success. I think I shot four deer with this last year, this exact setup. 
So it was, it was very solid. I shot, I think it was three does and one buck that I killed with this. So let's just throw it on here and weigh it. Should be right about the same, but we'll just see. Yeah, so coming in right at 479. So you'll notice on these 100 grain heads that they'll vary a lot. Like some of the heads that you'll get will weigh like 103 grains, some will weigh 97 grains. So it does, uh, does change the weight of your arrow and your FOC a little bit. So this example, G5 dead meat. So this deer was somewhere in the 30 okay. yard range, quarter and two, pretty good angle. I really like that quarter and, excuse me, quarter and away. He was quarter and away just slightly. That is a money angle. I've just, I've had good luck with that. I've seen, I've filmed a lot of hunts where you can kind of get double lung and kind of really, really punch that offside shoulder and you just get really good blood trails. And so this deer stops, gives me a perfect angle, zips right through him deer runs over there and dies on camera so pretty happy with that result and I don't have I didn't video it but I've got a picture of my camera roll so actually one of these blades was completely missing so just something to take note of out of all the deer that I shot with this broadhead last year um, didn't have any anything bad happen except for on that buck there I was completely missing missing a blade could have hit a rock after it um, went through the deer knocked the blade off could have came off inside the deer, not exactly sure what happened, still had a really good blood trail, um, deer died. So I guess that's the good thing. Like a lot of people, um, you know, I've shot plenty of rage broadheads in the past two blade, and I guess that is the benefit to a three blade is it just, you know, if you have anything happen to a blade, you still got two. And so, so that's that. And so I just wanted to run through these examples. Um, you know, for good or bad, take it for what it's worth. This is what has worked for me. I'm a lot happier with the results that I've gotten on the little bit heavier arrow. And so what I've been using the last few years is tack veins. Uh, they've been super durable. They're very stiff. And so I've liked the theory that T-Bone had in one of his recent videos that this thing's so stiff to where it can almost act like a second broadhead when it's going through the deer that can, you know, rip fat out of the way, rip hair out of the way, just kind of act like a second broadhead, just cleaning out that wound channel. So whether or not that happens, I don't know, but uh, makes sense to me. Uh, makes sense to shoot a stiffer, stiffer vein. I think it's a little bit quieter in flight, so. All right, so if you're curious about your total arrow weight and FOC percentage and uh, basically what FOC is, and, and there's, there's tons of good information out there, so I'm no expert by any means, but basically the FOC is the percentage of the weight that is forward on the, on the front end of your arrow. So what that does is, um, you know, they say it gives you better penetration. Uh, there are definitely some benefits to uh, tuning. You know, it seems to make your arrows tune a little better, maybe makes your broadheads fly a little better. So. I think this arrow in particular with the lighted knock is around, it's right around 18% FOC. And so anywhere from that 14, 15 to 18, some even say 20 range, seems to kind of be the happy medium sweet spot. And so I found that Gold Tip has a really easy way to uh, input all your weights and it'll give you a rough estimate of your FOC percentage. So we're gonna go point weight here 100 grains, insert weight, in my case is 100 grains. I don't have a collar. Shaft weight, grains per inch. I think this is nine point, the 340 is 9.3 grains per inch, I believe that should be right. Shaft length, carbon to carbon is 25 and a half. The vein weight, I think we're sitting at somewhere around six grains per vein, and number of veins, we're going three fletch. Knock weight is about 20 on the lighted knock. So we'll see if we're right. Yeah, so based on this, we're sitting at a right around 475 grains, which is accurate 15% of FOC. So 15% FOC on this with the lighted knock. So again, this is just an example of what's worked for me. Uh, not to say that I won't change it up. I'm constantly experimenting. So leave a comment. Um, 
what's your opinion on all these shots? What is your opinion on what worked really good? What didn't work as good? What you would change? What's worked for you? Leave a comment, uh, like, subscribe. Let us know if you like the archery content. Um, I've just been a student of it. I've really liked watching all the information there is out on YouTube. I've learned a ton. And so uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video.